life is about, making my physique look good for the internet. And so, with that in mind, it was easy to step back and just be like, oh, whatever, you know, I don't need to film YouTube, I don't need to be that guy in the gym with the camera all the time, which is a big pain in the ass. But I'm realizing that when I go to the gym, guys so what is going on this is my unfortunately second time doing this voiceover because I had a really nasty what's up what's going on finally back this is my third time doing this voiceover so for the first time the echo in the background was crazy I didn't have a microphone and my room echoes and the second time um, the lighting was terrible so I have a new light right here and I've got a blanket behind my computer, or behind my camera, and a microphone connected to my camera. So let's go ahead and try this today with the Rode mic and the uh, umbrella. <clears throat> so what did I talk about in my voiceover the last two times? Talked about my training, my limitations, and just kind of kept things realistic and honest. So as you guys may or may not know, I tore my meniscus over the summer falling. I think I tore it. But I was immobilized for about a month, and my hamstring locked up. Just a very, very depressing overall situation. It made me, realize, made me realize I wasn't taking care of myself. So that is the goal of this year. No matter what my injuries are, no matter what I'm going through, um, I need to count my blessings. And anytime I'm able-bodied, able to do anything, the glory has to be to God, it has to be to some sort of higher power, and I have to find meaning in what I'm doing. So. Let's get to this workout and hopefully um, if you guys are struggling with anything you reach out to me through DM and we can just come together as lifters, as brothers and sisters in iron. We can uh, spread that love and so many of you have already reached out through Instagram and I really, really appreciate it. It's definitely a difficult time right now for many of us and we are trying to find our way and uh, get back to doing what we love to do in the honor of a greater purpose. So. As you guys can see, this is a pull day with knee injury, so we're not doing anything where the knee is very loaded. In fact, when I upped it to 85 pounds on this one-arm dumbbell row, I felt pain in my right kneecap. Nothing indicative of, indicative of the fall or the recovery or the injury, just when I'm doing these PT exercises, which you'll see for about a minute and a half in the, later in the video, especially when I'm laying on my back and trying to kick into the air, the tight distal insertion of the hamstring, meaning, uh, by tight distal insertion of the hamstring, I mean this part right here behind my knee locked up, almost this chunk right here. By having to have my knee bent for so long, I locked this part of my leg up and it was not allowing me to extend my knee or even lock it out. So now I am fighting my body to learn how to lock it out because that torn meniscus told my body, you gotta be careful. So my physical therapist said you healed yourself as much as you could and now you're here. And our goal is to stop you from getting surgery. So no surgeon until we work together. So I'm gonna trust my physical therapist and as an aspiring and now soon to be class of 2022 physical therapist myself, uh, it's an honor and a privilege to work with, uh, with people. And I admire this gentleman a lot and hopefully he can help me out. I'm actually certain that he will. So uh, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful place to be right now. It's a nice time to be doing what I'm doing. And uh, I'm grateful that you guys are still here and I still have some sort of audience. So I'm grateful for that. And uh, let's get into this workout and just talk lifting and talk gains. So started off with chin-ups. I'm recovering my pec minor from just overusing it on the bench press. So I switched to incline press as I get my strength back. And now I can finally chin full range of motion. And if you guys don't think you use your tricep or your pec minor on a pull, a vertical pull, you're doing it wrong. When you go from here to here, the amount of mass and stimulation you can add onto your upper body is greater than just your back. So don't think of it as just a back exercise. But started with chins, I will add weight slowly. I gotta order a weight belt, damn it. Remind me guys to order a weight belt. So, uh, start doing weighted chins. Shout out to Connor there in the background. He was really cool. I got to spot him in a photo shoot. So, shout out to his friend who was Myron. Really appreciate the support, guys. And good luck to you all. Um, so yeah, we started with the chins. Nothing special there. I would have wanted to go into a barbell row, but again, 
It's a little too much stability I'm asking on my knee, especially when I'm training it an hour a day almost just with the PT exercises. So after that, I went into this seated high row, which I really, really enjoy. It allows me to kind of use a compound style movement by pushing with my feet off the pad and really using my glutes. And uh, you know, just a good way to finish off the, the, uh, the back with the dumbbell rows. I never go too heavy on dumbbell row because I find it will injure your shoulder over time, just pulling so one-sided. So I get a little volume in there and then I switch to a double hand. Now in retrospect, I think I'll start with that double hand, try to get a little volume and rest. And then when the pulling is sorted, go to the dumbbell and maybe do sets of like five or six with some heavy weight. So uh, something like that. And then I just ended up playing with some shrugs. I don't have a really weak lagging muscle group that this shrug addresses, but again, I'm just doing what I can. So after the pull day, I had the pleasure of training some arms and I wanna leave the rest of this video off uh, this voiceover by saying thank you to Jason Blaha, Jason Blaha Strength and Fitness or whatever you call it now, bro. Uh, Jason taught me that compound movements is the way to build muscle. And if you're isolating a movement, you're just wasting your recovery, you're wasting your connective tissue for nothing. But why am I doing arms and an easy bar extension at that? The reason is because I built my triceps by overhead pressing, by using that long head in an extended position. I built my biceps by doing weighted chin-ups, also by heavy bench presses on the tricep. So instead of building my arms with, with isolation work, I built them with compound movements. But what happens with compound movements? As you get stronger, you have to recover for longer. As you heal injuries and you pull back on weight, you're stimulating your potential less because you've built strength. So what happens if you have some shoulder pain or you have a tweak in your pec? but you have some new arm mass. That's when, if you cannot do a compound, go to your isolation, but make it a compound. As you can see, I'm bringing the barbell to my nose to finish that bicep and front delt contraction. And I, although I'm not swinging with this tricep movement, when you bring your elbows from your nipples to your forehead, which I'm doing here, you really activate that long head. And you guys can see that if you look at that long head right now. It's terrible muscle in my body and it's coming along. So. Like I said, I just want to point you guys in the right direction. If you're looking for um, someone's philosophy that I follow, I've gained this physique and I know how to do these movements because of my own experience and watching people like Jason Blaha. I've learned who to listen to. And today, it's not really about what you know or it's not really about having information because we can all Google a wealth of information, but it's how do you interpret and apply that information and what's right and wrong? 95% of the information out there is no benefit to you. So it doesn't really benefit you to have that information in the first place. So again, know where to look, respect the iron, and respect people who have a respect for the iron and admire those who would admire what you're doing. And if they don't pay attention to you and they don't consider what you're doing good, it's probably not the type of people you should be involved with. So it's good to be back here, guys and girls. Thank you very much. I'm grateful. It's RZ Fitness here for a pull day. We'll get this knee sorted and uh, I hope you guys appreciate this little upgraded quality or whatnot. It's just the beginning, so thank you. Guys, so that's gonna wrap up the workout. I am very grateful. Everything felt really good. My left pec minor is still 90%, but I'm not gonna hit upper for a good three days, I think. So three more days will equal more recovery and then uh, day off and maybe pull again so we'll come back and hit incline but pec is fine it's just instead of the pec major under pressing it was the pec minor under a fly during elbow flare so i'm going to go through the exercises that i've been prescribed and i won't bore you with too much but it's going to be a while
I guess that was one round. Five or six exercises. Uh, whatever, 20, 30 reps, 30 seconds on the stretch. So literally 20 plus minutes twice a day. But I wasn't able to train legs for months or walk. And so to be able to use my quad and finally extend and lock out my knee, I'm really grateful. So sets two and three, and then we're done. And we are home with some groceries. So what did I get post-workout coming back in town? I'm gonna show you and explain to you a couple things about my maybe newer approach to having more fats and less carbs. I used to binge carbs because I got a good psychological effect from it and you don't get fat when you binge carbs and don't eat fat. At least I don't because I have muscle mass, etc. you know, when you're training. But now that my compound movements are coming a little bit down for now, a lot down, I'm just gonna switch to more fats and way less carbs or cut carbs in half or so, so instead of 500, you know, 250 or something like that. So let me explain to you what I got here. I haven't eaten post-workout, so I'm gonna have chicken and rice. I could have oats and protein powder, but you know, let's get some chicken, maybe a little skin, get a whole real food. I mean, whey protein's perfectly real, but let's get some more whole foods in me. So I'll probably have a banana, uh, some chicken, only 50 carbs though, and then we're gonna cook. So what's for meals here? We got lean chicken tenderloins, super simple. Bread, so we can make some semi-healthy processed meat sandwiches. Again, processed meat's not very good, but this is a uh, top round London broil, so I'm not really sure how this is made and processed, but it doesn't scare me like Oscar Mayer, like pack opening things that you just buy at supermarket scare me. This is a little more of a natural grocery store. So I'm gonna show you the difference in red meats, guys. I said I wanna up my fats, and if you're gonna ever up your fats with red meat, you want it grass fed. What happens when you grass feed a cow? Their omega-3 and 6 ratios are much, well, they exist. They're almost maybe non-existent when they're just grain fed. But a grass eats, or a cow eats grass all the time and can convert, I believe, uh, those enzymes with enzymes in their body convert either substrate from the grass into omega-3s or that grass helps them make these omegas in ways that benefit us when we eat them. So never buy fatty red meat that isn't grass fed. And if you're on a diet and you're eating very lean meats, it's a waste of money to buy really lean grass fed beef if you can't really, really afford it. So off season, gaining weight, caring about strength, get your fatty beef grass fed. If you're getting shredded and you want some red meat, probably not the best idea to have grass or high fat. I mean, it's healthier grass fed, I guess, so, but it's really expensive. So to show you, this is about one to one fat. So when you eat a 20 gram of protein, protein of fat, when you eat 20 grams of protein of grass fed beef, you're gonna get about 20 grams of fat, a little less fat than protein, which is something you can't eat all the time, not good. But once a day for your fats, very good. And conversely, we're gonna compare that to this London broil. Now, although this is processed, it's red meat, and we have one fat, 11 protein. So two red meats with massive, massive caloric and fat differences. So if this isn't grass-fed, I don't care. But it's just for convenience. That's why the bread's there. The chicken is also just to pull apart and make sandwiches or emergency meals like I'm gonna do now. <coughs> Spinach for health. <coughs> so yeah, I'm hungry. I'm gonna make some chicken and rice. And while I'm eating, I'm gonna cook and everything. So I won't show you the next meal. The next meal is gonna be six to eight ounces of chicken and eaten with some riggedy 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 rice. Excuse me guys, and girls, and everything in between. And for rice guys, always go jasmine rice. Never go long grain or, long grain or brown. Brown rice takes 50 minutes to cook and I just don't recommend it. But white rice on the other hand, jasmine, takes 18 minutes. So I'm gonna set my timer and the rice will be done. 18 minutes. When you bring one of these chickens home, this is what you do. You just go right in, don't leave it like this. While it's hot, well hopefully not like piping hot. While it's warm, skin it or de Meat it, I don't know, take all the flesh off the bird. So we don't use the skin really. Skin is pure fat. Not that that's bad for you, but whatever. But from this little guy, we're gonna get a lot of white meat and some brown meat as well.
Here's the finished product, more or less a pound of pretty lean chicken, but one of my pro tips for this is um, a lot of you guys may take joint supplements like glucosamine and chondroitin, and some of them have cartilage, even like the Arthalyze right here, has standard chicken cartilage, which I think is pretty amazing. When you buy a whole bird and you debone it, or de uh, you take the meat off of it, you really can take tendons and ligaments and connective tissue with you. So a lot of this right here, if you see that, that's like gelatinous, cartilaginous connective tissue. So I think if you eat that multiple times a day instead of just breast, um, it might benefit. It might benefit you. So I'm gonna wrap this up and stop filming. You guys have seen me cook chicken and beef a million times. So I'm gonna do that and not risk burning my camera or burning myself. So I'll check in with you guys soon.